Welcome to PCR studio. Uh, I'm Dr. Stanković coming from Belgrade, Serbia, and I have with me Dr. Adrian Benning and Dr. Muhammad Kurdi. And our topic for today is percutaneous treatment of left main disease. Adrian, why such an interest in left main treatment? It's interesting, isn't it, Goran? I mean, we've been treating left main for 20 years, but there's a real buzz at the meeting this year about treatment of left main, and I think there are really three reasons for that. I think the first is there's an increasing consensus as to how we should do it and how by doing it properly we can get a fantastic result. The second reason is the anticipation of the publication of two big trials, the Nobel trial and the Excel trial at TCT uh, in the fall. They're head-to-head -head comparisons with surgery and there's great optimism within the PCI community that we may see uh, equivalence from a PCI strategy for treatment. And the third is the availability of dedicated stents to the left main, particularly uh, the Onyx stent, for example, which has this 4, 5 and 5 uh, size, which allows us to treat this big vessel with a stent which is appropriate for that sort of ind indication. And as you know, the uh, further trial that we're going to do with that uh, stent, the EBC trial uh, of the left main bifurcation, is a really exciting trial to be part of, and we look forward to recruiting that over the next couple of years and supplementing that information on the technique uh, piece that we're now getting clear, clearer about how we should treat the left main specifically. Before we know the answer from EBC main, one versus two stands, Muhammad, what is your current strategy? How do you approach percutaneously left main? Yeah, I think understanding the bifurcation is very important. And once you understand the bifurcation and how you classify the bifurcation, then you could set up your strategy. We used to think uh, with the older generation stand that maybe one stand is the best strategy. With what we're seeing recently with the development of the newer DS and the thinner struts and the data that's coming with, for example, the Korean numbers that we share today, I think that tells us that there is no big difference between one or two stent strategies. One of the problems of the left main that, as uh, today we discussed, it's usually 50% calcified, it's distal in about 80% of the time. So you're going to face a bifurcation which of two large vessels that you have to end by doing a two-stent strategies. Um, I think that gives us the room to do more left main stenting than before. And um, currently there are multiple, multiple uh, techniques to do the bifurcation stenting with two stents. The, the most important thing is optimization of the technique, making sure that you've done things in a very systematic way and with a good result and, uh, and a good opposition of, the, of, of these struts against the wall. And that's, I guess, that's the message. Um, this is where uh, the newer stent give, uh, giving us a better opposition and also make our life easier by having access on the side branches. So going with one stent in the old, maybe older uh, stents, uh, now we have more room to go with two stents in a more comfortable uh, position than, than before. What are the characteristics of dedicated stents for left main that you expect from a new devices that will improve and simplify your intervention? I think the, one of the major things was the size, the discrepancy on the size between the left main and the LED or the circ. And now with the newer stent like the Onyx stent, we have up to five millimeter, which really give you a space to expand more and maybe go up to larger than five, which is excellent make you feel more comfortable. One of the problems we used to face is after we finish, you do an IVUS and you find your stent hanging on the left main and you have no other option just to maybe hyperinflate or expand. By having a stent which is more expandable, that's give you more comfort. So that's one, one of the things. The, the, the stent which does not foreshorten, and that's very important. In the recent, recent year, we, know, we, we realized that there are stents not good for, for left main because they have the property of foreshortening. The Onyx, as we talked about today, has one of the stents that does not have that feature, which is maybe make it more suitable for a left main. So the size, the foreshortening, and the access to the side branch, which is very important. And visibility as Absolutely, well. Absolutely, and visibility. Yeah. Uh, Adrian, uh, what do you think about routine use of imaging? Do you think it's a must or nice to have? I think broadly it's a must. I think clearly there are some emergency cases where we might not be in a position to do imaging. But ultimately what we're learning is that, uh, that the left main environment is challenging. It's relatively unpredictable. And we need to have a stringency of our result which is going to 
essentially compete with coronary artery bypass surgery in the long term. So consequently we need to be absolutely sure that we prepare the lesion properly. I think there's a strong case for increased use of debulking devices, perhaps cutting balloons. We need to be sure that we've employed the right stent, that that stent can give us uh, good expansion, has the flexibility to perhaps uh, have a 3-5 within the LED and perhaps even a 5 within the left main. We're then able to check that with intravascular ultrasound and then we need to have the conscientiousness to go back to do our final uh, inflations, to do our pot expansion in the left main body and to be absolutely sure we've done a great job, that that stent is properly expanded, there are no gaps, we've covered all the lesion and if we do that and we explain the need to our patients to take the dual antiplatelet therapy then I think we can expect a great long-term result which is what ultimately we all want for our patients. Thank you very much. So what, if I can summarize, proper patient selection, proper procedural planning, use of new devices like the Onyx 10 and use of imaging to make the procedure safest with predictable long-term outcome. Thank you very much. Thank you.